Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our 14th monthly virtual town hall. And that's right, it was number 14 last month. We got lucky number 13 out of the way as we talked about how we utilize our social media channels to inform, educate, and assist you, our customers. But this month, we are going to be talking about your multiple off-street parking options. Now, off-street parking is more commonly referred to as garage parking or parking lot uh, parking options. So parking, it is not just for the streets. We also have garages and lots. I'd also like to take this time to remind all of our attendees that everyone in attendance tonight is currently muted. However, that does not mean we do not want to hear from you. Should you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to put them in the question feature that you see on the web, web application. And in addition to that, immediately following this presentation, there will be a brief five question survey that we would be greatly appreciative if you took the time to fill it out. It takes about 30 seconds and it really helps us gauge what our customers want to know about. And we actually do take that feedback very seriously and we tailor our monthly virtual town hall meetings in part based off that feedback. Uh, as we conduct these monthly virtual town hall meetings, we have an immense amount of internal support, namely from our executive director, Scott Petri, our Deputy Executive Director, Irene Tolson, our, our Senior Director of Public Engagement, Sue Cornell. My name is Bill Wasser, and I'm here once again with my favorite co-worker and colleague. Hello, everyone, and good evening. My name is Janelle King. And we are both communications coordinators with the Philadelphia Parking Authority's Department of Public Engagement. And we also have a, another minor special guest here tonight. Keith, would you mind popping up on the screen for us, please? Hi everyone, I'm Gabe. Uh, I'm the intern for the communications department. Happy to be here. Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we, uh, we do want to hear from you. We want to, to do our best to address the question that you may have. And whenever you have a question, put it in the question feature and we will be checking in with Gabe to hopefully address any of the questions that you may have. So Janelle, Let's get right into it. Parking, it's not just for the streets. So we're going to give you a little history first, like why we do what we do. We're going to talk about our off-street parking options. And like Bill said, off-street, we mean garages and lots, our community parking lot, garage safety tips, and some of our holiday parking specials. That's right. And we're going to start off with a brief history of the Philadelphia Parking Authority, and we're going to touch on it a little bit later. We have something kind of fun in store for our attendees here tonight. But the, the history of the Philadelphia Parking Authority actually dates all the way back to the late 40s and early 50s. In 1947, the PA General Assembly, the state legislature, passed the Pennsylvania Parking Authority Law. Now, what that did is, is what was called enabling legislation that allowed local municipalities such as Philadelphia to establish their own parking authorities. So we go from 1947 and fast forward to 1950, that is exactly what Philadelphia City Council did. They passed an ordinance officially establishing the Philadelphia Parking Authority. Now at that point, the Philadelphia Parking Authority, the only thing that it oversaw at that time was off-street parking, which again is more commonly referred to as garage parking and, and parking lot parking options. So that's where it all started, all the way back in 1950. Only off-street parking. That's the only thing that the Parking Authority had overseen. But if you fast forward a couple of decades, to the year 1983, another piece of legislation was passed that allowed local municipalities to designate certain powers to their parking authorities. And that is what happened in 1983 when City Council passed an ordinance that transferred responsibilities of other functions to the Philadelphia Parking Authority from other city agencies. And those responsibilities included at the time the installation and maintenance of parking meters, establish, establishing parking regulations, 
collecting the on-street meter revenue, issuing parking violations, the towing and impoundment of motor vehicles, establishing and enforcing loading zones, establishing and administering the residential parking permit program. And 1983 was also the year uh, in which we began a mobilization of vehicles more commonly referred to as booting. But the main point that we are trying to make here, and since the topic tonight here is off-street parking options, it all started in 1950. We have been in, so to speak, the garage business since 1950. So we've been doing it a long, long time. And before we get into all the specific information regarding your garage and parking lot options, we did want to take a brief moment to show you where that information lives on our website because everything that we go over here tonight, there is additional information on our website that you may be interested in reviewing. So I'm going to show you a brief demo of our website before we go any further. And so the process all starts by visiting our website, www.villapark.org. You'll be brought to the home page. And if you're looking for your parking garage or parking lot options, you're going to go up here and you'll have a drop down option. You'll see you can look at the garages, our community lots, and our commuter lots, our train station lots. And if you click on the garage section, all of the PPA operated garages will be provided there and you will be able to click on each individual garage and be able to see additional information on each. So it's relatively easy to navigate and it's the same, same concept when you are uh, searching for your community parking lot options as well. You go to the drop down option, you just click community parking lots and each lot is separated based on the location it is in the city. So we just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that should you want to pursue additional information following this presentation. And we will be coming back to the website a little bit later in this presentation to show you something else as well. But Janelle, we've said it a couple of times all night, Actually, can you confirm you are seeing the seeing proper screen right here? You are seeing the uh, slideshow? Yeah, I see the slideshow. And it was okay. just on this slide that we were just on about the demo. Perfect. Okay. You know, time to time, there are some hiccups with the input. You know, but you know, we've said this a couple of times already. Parking, it's not just for the street. It's not just about on-street parking. When we say off street parking, we mean anything that is not at the curb. But and then when I say at the curb, we mean our kiosk, our meter parking, and like our residential parking. So if you're coming off the curb, we have over 5,500 garage parking spaces in Center City alone and over 2,700 community parking lot spaces. So if you're driving downtown to visit or if you're in a, your local area in your local community, you can find parking spaces not at the curb but off street in our garages and our lots. So in Center City, we offer set, we have seven center, seven center city yes, garages. Say that three times fast. <laughs> our, our center city garages are conveniently placed throughout downtown. So if you're going shopping, let's say at the fashion district, you'll find parking on 9th and Arch or yeah, on 9th and Arch at our fashion district. Or if you're visiting Dilworth Park, maybe a parking option would be that our gateway garage on 15th and Vine or our family court garage. So our garages are all over downtown or conveniently placed throughout downtown. So if you're accessing like a tourist location, the visitor center, we have an independent small auto park where you can find parking. So in our department, we love making videos. So nothing speaks better to what we do than making a video about it. So we, we made a quick video about paying in our center city garages. So here's the process. Hey guys, once again, thanks for attending our virtual town hall. We're just going to take a minute and show you how to properly make payment at our Center City Garages. 
so let's get right into it. When entering our garages, you have two options. At each garage entrance, you can either obtain a ticket or insert a credit card. If you obtain a ticket, make sure to secure it in a safe place because you will need it later. If you obtain a ticket when entering, insert it into the payment kiosk and make your payment. After making payment, take your ticket. You will need it at the exit gate. Once you arrive at the exit gate, insert your ticket or the credit card you use when entering the garage. If you need assistance, simply press the help button and a team member will head your way. But if you're good to go, the exit gate will rise and you will be on your way. So that was our brief video on how you pay in our garages. And we wanted to make highlight or note of paying in our garages because in our Center City garages, we have credit card in and out um, kiosk. So if you're paying with, if you choose to pay with your credit card, you can, we were saying in the video, you can enter or put that credit card in when you're entering our garages. And if you're paying with that credit card, when you enter it in at the entrance gate, you must use that same credit card to exit at the exit gate. You can't take that credit card and pay at one of the pay by foot kiosk machines in our garages. So we just wanted, I wanted to make mention of that because it may be a little confusing. So if you pay with a credit card, you can only use that credit card at the in and out gates in our garages, not at the pay on foot kiosk. But if you pull a ticket when you enter our garage, you can either pay on at one of our pay on foot stations or you can pay with that ticket at exit if you're using credit or debit cards. So I just wanted to make mention and clear that up if it was a little confusing. All right, thanks, Jenna. Before we go any further, I'm not seeing any uh, questions thus far, but uh, I did want to also wish our number one fan in King a happy holidays as well. We're always happy to, to have you with us uh, here during these monthly virtual town hall meetings. So, Happy holidays to you and your family as well. So let's have a little bit of fun here, folks. Let's go take a trip down memory lane. It is Thursday, so it's a perfect time for some throwback Thursday. On the screen right now, you see a PPA-operated garage. The picture is dated 1961. So what I want you guys to do right now, and everyone in attendance, is take a good hard look at this picture and think of where and what this garage is. And then we're going to put up a few multiple choices up on the screen. And if you are the first person to select the correct answer, you will win 10 hours of free parking at a PPA operated garage of your choice from any time from now till the end of January. So I'll leave this up on the screen for a few more seconds. If you guys are trying to jog your memory a little bit, maybe you might want to phone a friend or just reach deep into your memories whether or not you saw this. But this is from 1961, and it is a garage that is still operated by the Philadelphia Parking Authority. I'm going to give you about five more seconds, and then I'll put up the, the options up on the screen. I'll do a quick countdown for you guys. Five. Four, three, two, one. All right. No guesses? We're going to launch the. We're going to give about 10 more seconds. If you haven't guessed already, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And if you answered 
you know, can I get a drum roll? Actually, you know, Keith, give us a drum roll. <laughs> Keith, drum roll, please. I got this. <laughs> if you answer the parkade on eight, you are correct. It is our flagship parking garage. And if you answered that correctly, it looks like someone did. Congratulations. You are the proud winner of 12 hours of free parking at a PPA Center City operated garage of your choice. We will be reaching out to you tomorrow morning to obtain your contact information and uh, better co and coordinate with you to make sure that you get that validation. So congratulations and thanks for participating. So we just went over a little bit of our parking garages in Center City, but you know, we do provide more than just garages in Center City as well. Correct. We're still talking about parking, not at the curb, but off the curb and off street. So we talked about our lots. I mean, I'm sorry, I apologize, our garages, but now we want to talk about our surface lots. So these are like flat paved lots where you don't have to drive up a ramp. You can enter and exit on the same level. So those lots are at 8th and Chestnut, 9th and Callow Hill, and the auto park at Ben Franklin Bridge. So going through our parking, we offer at all our Center City garages, we offer monthly parking options. So if you live in the city or if you work in the city and you need parking on a daily basis, you can sign up for our monthly parking. So if you want to park at the Ben Franklin Auto or the Ben Franklin Bridge, it would be two thirty a month. But if you want to park at our nineteenth and Callahill lots, it's one ninety nine a month. Now four of our center city garages offer evening and weekend rates you know, in comparison to where they are located. So if you're parking in a fashion district or say you live near the fashion district and you come home in the evening and you want to find a convenient parking space, you can sign up for monthly parking in that garage and only have to pay if you enter the garage at any time after 4 p.m. and exit any time before 8 a.m., you're allowed to pay $160 for the month for an evening rate of parking. So it's not like you have to pay for the full day of parking. You have just the evening rates for that month. Now, monthly parking allows you to come and go as you please. It's not like a one day you come in, that same day you only get the one exit. No, you can enter and exit as many times as you please, 10 times a day if you like within the one day, as long as you're a monthly, you know, a monthly patron. We offer different rates for our monthly patrons. So the, the rates that I had listed on the page prior or for an individual rate. So if it was just like you or I just inquiring about monthly parking, we would be an individual rate. Now say if you're a business and you need a couple of spaces, maybe for either your tenants or your employees and you wanna reserve a block of parking spaces in one of our garages, we also offer different rates for that. We offer different rates for fleet of vehicles, for government vehicles, employees, city workers, and contractors. So if you have maybe if your job or your, your description falls under one of those titles, you may apply for a different monthly parking rate than for an individual. So I just wanted to make sure that I covered that of the monthly parking prices. And if you're interested in applying to be a monthly parking patron, we'd love to have you. And we'd also like to take the time to show you how the process works. Well, number one, if you do, if you are interested, you can inquire in person at the garage in question. However, we do have an online process as well, and I'm going to show you briefly how to uh, how to navigate that a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to our website here. I mean, since it's a virtual town hall, let's get virtual. Let's get virtual. Back to our website. And again, you're going to go where we went before. You go to the garage page, which is listed right here. And if you're interested in a particular garage, you just click on that specific garage location. And if it is available, if monthly parking is available, you will see a link to an application. Now, here we are at the Independence Mall Auto Park with a monthly, monthly rate of $240. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the link to the application, and you're going to fill this application out right here, where you find the application. 
And once you fill out that application, you're going to email it to PPA monthly parking at philapark.org. We do have that email address up on the previous slide, and I'll be sure to go back to that so you can write it down if you are interested. So after you have this application filled out and it's sent to our monthly parking team and reviewed, you will be, and if it's reviewed and approved, you will be provided a, a patron ID number. Now at that point, that's when you become a monthly parking patron, a monthly parking customer. So you will have to make monthly payments. So once you have your ID number established, you can make monthly payments right through the payment portal, which is linked on each site which is linked on each garage page that you're a member of. So the process really is that simple. And as I mentioned, uh, I'll go back to the slide so you can take note of that email address there. It's PPA monthly parking at villapark.org if you are interested in applying. Uh, keep in mind, uh, should you have any questions about the monthly parking program, please feel free to reach out to our monthly parking team at that address. Now, Janelle, <laughs> we, we, we've talked about our garage locations, but let's start to reaffirm what the benefits are of parking. We want to highlight some of the benefits and the features of our Center City garages. So most of our Center City garages are open 24 hours. We have daily parking discounts. We offer a flash rate when flash is operating, business validations. We have electrical vehicle charging stations, um, competitive pricing, credit card in and out machines, bike racks, and pay on foot kiosks. So I'm going to go through some of these benefits to highlight and let you know what they offer. So 24 7 access, we have our, all of these garages listed on the screen are open 24 7. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they they are open. Not only is the garage open, but I'm speaking more so of the business or the management office located in each garage. So if you have a problem with any of your parking problems, all of these garages are open 24 seven. Now on the next screen, I have a list of the garages just because I wanted to you know, give you as much information as I could. All of our garages are not 24 hours. So I wanted to make mention of the three garages that are not 24 hours. The auto park at the Fashion District, their hours are 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, Jefferson is 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. And the courthouse has weekend and weekday and weekend um, hours. So this is just more so for the management office that is located within the garages. Now, I don't want you to get scared or be alarmed if you are trying to retrieve your vehicle after these hours, it is still possible. You either pay with a ticket when you enter the garage or you enter with your credit card. So all of those payment methods are still accessible after hours. You can either pay at the pay on foot kiosk that's located on the first floor or in the garage, depending on which garage you're parking in, or you can pay with your credit card at the gate when you're exiting. So it's just that simple, but I just wanted to make, you know, note that if the garage is closed, that doesn't mean that you cannot still access your vehicle. Good point. You know what? Let's take a break and check in with our esteemed favorite intern. Eve, we got any questions thrown our way? Yes, we have one. Um, someone wants to know um, how safe are the garages? It's a very good question. Uh, well, first of all, all of our garages do have security cameras on them and we do like to think that our garages are safe and well lit but to your question we are at a little bit later we are actually going to be going through some garage safety tips uh, to ensure that our patrons are you know, more well in tune with uh, simply perhaps staying safer while parking in garages but that's a really good question and we like to think our garages are are safe and if you're parking at one of our garages that is 24 hours, there is staff at those locations all times of the day. So it's not just you coming in and parking and no one else is there in the building. We have people that operate our garages daily. So they are staffed and will be there to help you assist or anything of the like. All right, folks, I don't know if we have any cross-country travelers here or if you plan to, but um, our 
most of our garages do not provide um, accommodations for oversized vehicles such as RVs or, or buses, but we do provide one, and that is our auto park in Old City. It's located right in Old City on 2nd Street. There has a 13-foot clearance, and there's 13 spaces for oversized vehicles. So if you know anyone who's planning on making a family road trip in their RV, this would probably be the best place to do it in Philadelphia. But our daily rates and month, our, our garage's rates just don't stop with the 24 hour rates and the monthly parking rates. We actually offer daily customer discounts. Now, you know how they say the early bird gets the worm? The same goes for discounted pricing, for discounted rates at our garages. At all of our garages, we provide early bird specials, evening rates, even weekend flat rates. In fact, our Gateway Garage, located at 15th and Vine Street, has a $7 per day flat rate on the weekend. It is the cheapest garage in the city. And we also provide customer discounts for the Lantern Theater. If you see a show there, if you present your ticket at the management office, you will be given a special rate as well. And we do provide $5 flat rate parking for scooters or motorcycles. Keep that in mind if your primary mode of transportation is uh, is a two-wheeler. But it doesn't just stop with the discounts. We also partner with businesses. Right. So not only do we offer discounts in our garages, but we partner with local businesses and we validate their we honor validations for parking for their customers. So it's like say if you're participating in restaurant week and you want to, you know, come downtown to dine in a restaurant. So if that restaurant is participating in restaurant week, they will give you a validation card, which you can bring to our garage where you're parked, one of the PPA Center City garages. You bring that validation or that, that chaser to our business office, and they'll be able to validate your parking for the rate and honor that price. So not only do we honor stuff during restaurant week, but if you're visiting a local theater downtown, maybe ask about their validations and see if they're partnering with us to offer a special rate for parking. Um, at our Independence Visitor Center, especially Friday and Saturday, there's a flat rate parking deal <laughs> for parking in our Independence Vis Visitor Center on Friday and Saturday. Bill, could you refresh my mind? I think I have a little memory oh, lapse of the price. The whole city <laughs> yes, I, I, we post about it all the time. Yeah, but... no, it's $7 there you go. after 5 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights. It's, that's the flat rate park at our so if you're visiting Old City on the weekend, a Friday or a Saturday night after 5 p.m., you can go to the Independence Visitor Center and apply or get the $7 flat rate parking in our Independence um, Auto Park. Or if you're visiting a fashion district, they offer validations when you shop in the, the fashion district or which is formerly known as the gallery. So if you park in our fashion district or in our, in our auto park fashion district, you're more than welcome or more than likely to get this validation if you're shopping in the fashion district itself. And Janelle, I'm sorry, I don't mean to kind of go off course here a little bit, but I do see another really good question from one of our attendees here tonight. And uh, the question is, what if I have a monthly pass, but I have two different cars, am I still able to use the garage? Uh, Ms. Fisher, we, we're going to follow up with you on that. I do believe that it's uh, specific to a specific uh, vehicle. But I just want to double check with our off street parking team on that. And we'll be sure to follow up with you tomorrow on that. So that's a really good question. And I'm going to wind up learning or confirming something from that. We will be following up with you. We really, really appreciate the question. And as Billy Mays once said, but wait, there's more, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you tried to sell something, I always immediately wanted to chase the chip. Yeah. But we also offer what is called the flash discount rate. Now, what is the flash? The flash is a tour bus for a, it's a bus provided by the Philadelphia Visitor Center that takes you around to all the hot spots and all the historic sites throughout Philadelphia. I've personally done it with my family before from my out of town family. And it was, it was, it was a great experience. So if you, Use the flash loop is what it's called. Again, provided by the Philadelphia Visitor Center. 
you actually get a parking validation or what's called the flash rate. All you need to do is provide your flash ticket to the management office to get the flat rate listed there. Now these rates are available whenever the flash bus is in service. And those service hours can be provided can be found at the visitor center's website, which is also provided on the screen for you right there. It's phlvisitorcenter.com slash flash. So use the flash, get that ticket, show it to our team at the management office, and you'll be getting the discounted rates that you see on the screen right there. So one of our other features in our garages are the pay on foot kiosk. So say if you take your ticket with you, like we said in the video, if you take your ticket with you, you can pay at one of these pay on foot kiosks and they're conveniently located in the garages, either on the first floor or on different levels throughout the garage, depending on which, um, which garage you're visiting. So say if you're visiting the auto park at the fashion district, they have different levels where you don't have to go all the way down to the first floor to pay for your parking. You can get to your level, pay for parking, and go to your car and exit at the gate. So it's just that simple, and I wanted to make note of where you can find these pay-on-foot stations. But I also wanted to make note that if you lose a ticket when you park in our garage, unfortunately, you will have to pay the highest rate at that garage for that day. So just a word of the wise, you know, keep your ticket in a safe place. Whether you keep your ticket with you when you, you know, put it in your, your purse or your wallet when you're exiting the garage, or you can leave it in your vehicle so that way when you're exiting, if you want to pay, only leave it in your vehicle if you want to pay with your credit or your debit card. Because you will not be able to pay with cash at the exit kiosk. So you'll only be able to pay in cash at the pay on foot kiosk stations. Also, in our garages, we're in our garage on the park gate on 8th and also our airport garage, we offer electric vehicle charging stations. So if you're a member of ChargePoint, you can pull into our garage and charge your electric vehicle while you park. While you park. So, and it's not that, that difficult. If you're not a customer, you can just download the free app and they'll let you know exactly where all the ChargePoint stations are in your area and you'll be able to just pull up and charge your electric vehicle. And also another point to add to the uh, it's free to charge your uh, a vehicle at the uh, at our park eight on eight and our airport parking facilities. You have you have to pay to park, but you don't have to pay to charge up your vehicle. So that's just an added amenity that we are trying to implement. We're really really excited uh, because we do anticipate expanding the electric vehicle charge stations to multiple other locations in the near future. So we're really really uh, excited about that and uh, contributing to reducing carbon footprint. Yes. So I just wanted to add that in. I apologize for interrupting. It's no problem. And also in our garages, we have bike rack parking. So say if you're, you do not drive a motor vehicle or a motorcycle or scooter and you drive a pedal bike and you want to chain it up or lock it in a secure place, our center city garages have bike rack parking. Not all, but most of them. So say if you're in the area and you want to make sure that you can pipe, oh, excuse me, <laughs> park your bike safely, you can check and see if one of our garages or the garage close to you has bike rack parking available. Now let's talk uh, price a little bit here. Uh, but before I do, one, one of the, uh, the guiding principles to the Philadelphia Parking Authority's mission is to offer uh, competitive pricing in a way that would ensure that private operators do not have astronom astronomical parking rates at their garage. So we make a, a consistent effort to survey all the private garages throughout the city to see what their rates are and ensure that our rates are considerably lower than theirs in order to ensure that their prices are not astronomical. Now, as you can see across the board, uh, the PPA is in uh, the teal color there, while the average price of private operators is in uh, the, the greener color. Our rates are consistently lower than private operators, and that, that is by design. So in the long run, 
we do offer the cheapest rates in the city when it comes to parking garages. And the rates that you see right here are the average 24 hour rates, but our rates are consistently, consistently lower uh, across all, uh, all rate types. Just wanted to make sure you knew that if you're parking with us, you're paying the, you're likely paying the cheapest amount you can. Get the most bang for your buck. Most bang for your buck. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, in the future, we're actually really, really excited about this. The, the PPA is going to be implementing the ability to reserve parking and the ability to pay at our garages using our mobile payment app, Meter Up. We're really, really excited about that. Right now, you can only use Meter Up to make parking to pay for parking at the meter. And people absolutely love it. In fact, we're approaching nearly 1 million users on that. But in the near future, you will be able to go on online, whether it's on your computer or on your phone, to, to reserve parking ahead of time, and just the ability to make payments on a daily basis at our garages. So keep your keep your eyes out for that. So we talked a lot about our center city garages, but we want to move to the outlining neighborhoods and we want to talk about our community parking lots. The PPA operates over 40 parking lots throughout the city. Some of our lots are paid, some of them are free, just depending on the lot. So I wanna go over some of the benefits of our community parking lots. Our community parking lots, they are all open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you can park in them at any time, pay for parking or have parking be free, just depending on the lot. The lots are, um, they have LED lighting, reserved disabled parking, and also zip car spaces. So most of our, or not most, but our community lots offer bike rack parking like our garages. So if you do not own a motor vehicle and you still would like a place to securely park your bike and lock it up, you can park it in our parking lot. Um, we offer monthly parking options for some of our community parking lots, just depending on the lot, like I said. Some of them are residential, um, I'm sorry, residential permit exempt. So if you have a permit, let's say like you're in District 12 and there is a lot in District 12 that says RPP, like two hour parking, RPP District 12 exempt. That means that you can find, if you find a space in that parking lot, you don't have to stay for just the two hours. Your, um, your residential parking permit allows you to park past the posted limit. Some of our lots, they offer pay by plate parking. So if it is a paid lot and you see a kiosk, that means you have to pay. But other than that, if you do not see a kiosk or the time parking, that means that lot is complimentary and it is free. And also in our community lots, we also offer meter up. So if you see a pay by plate kiosk, that pay by plate kiosk is associated with a mobile payment zone meter up, which allows you to pay from your phone, either in your car or on your way to the train or on your way out of the lot, you can pay for parking. So not only do we have our community lots, but if you catch the train into Center City, you may be parking at one of our train station lots. In our train station lots, we offer $2 flat rate parking for up to 24 hours. So say if your shift is 12 hours or your shift is eight hours and you commute to the city, you can pay $2 flat rate parking for up to two hours. We have pay by space kiosk in our commuter lots and they're also meter up accessible. So if you have, let's say, like I said, you see a pay by plate or if you see a kiosk machine, that kiosk is associated with the meter up zone, which means that you can pay from your mobile app. Those stations are the Fern Rock, like the Fern Rock train station, Fox Chase station, and also the Torresdale station. So if you park at any one of those commuter lots, you're offered a $2 flat rate parking for up to 24 hours. Yeah, and it's especially convenient at train station lots, I feel like, because that means you don't have, like, if, if you're in a time crunch and you get to the train station as the train's approaching, you could just run past the kiosk, get on the train, and pay for it right on the train. So it's, it's a really, really convenient option for commuters if you utilize one of those commuter lots. Just want to make note, if you're paying on your way to your train, before you leave your car, make sure you know the space that you parked in because the train station lots are pay by space. So it's not pay by car, it's a pay by space, which means you actually have to pay for the space you're parked in. So you want to take note of the space that you're parked in, but you can pay for your 
you know, your parking space on your meter app on your way to the train. So don't miss the train trying to pay for parking. Get your space number and you can pay for parking on your way to the train. All right. And so we went over the rates and everything and we were, were very, very appreciative of the current patrons that we have and our, the future patrons that we have. But the main thing we want to make ensure is help you ensure your safety. So we are going to go over some parking garage safety tips about this video. So number one, it's always good to park in a well-lit area. And like I said earlier, I, I don't believe you would have any issue in that regard with our garages. But if you're parking in any garage, it's always good to park in a well-lit area and always ensure that your valuables are locked out of sight in your vehicle. Please, please do not make the mistake that I did when I went to university and I had my laptop on my passenger seat. And sure enough, I come back to my garage and my Brand new expensive laptop with all of my schoolwork on it was gone and never to be seen again. But you know what? It was a lesson learned because I always lock away my valuables going forward. You know? Now, I don't want, can I just butt in for a second? Yeah, sure. These are not only just garage safety tips, but yeah. these are also safety tips if you're using in a parking lot or if you're just parking your car on the curb. These are safety tips that we all should use when parking our vehicles. Upon exiting your vehicle, good idea to just lock your vehicle right away and just take note, generally take note of your surroundings and take note of where you park. Some parking garages can be pretty confusing depending on how big it is. You don't want to come out of the office or come back from dinner and I'm scratching your head like, what floor did I park on? What level did I park on? So it's always good to take a mental note of that. And in addition to that, so you know what, that text message or that phone call can probably wait a little bit there. Just wait until you are out of the garage and be alert when using stairs and elevators. But when returning to your vehicle, always good to have your keys in hand and ready to go. And upon entering your vehicle, lock your doors. And again, that text message can wait. You don't have to linger around in the garage. Just be on, be on your way. So those are just some general, general. Not only like Janelle said, parking garage tips, but parking tips in general to keep in mind. Yes, especially with it getting you know darker later in the day. Yeah. Night is approaching sooner, so you know we may come out of work and it, we're not used to seeing it be so dark. But as long as you know you refresh yourself with these safety tips, you should be fine anywhere. So what are we to not talk about our holiday parking specials? Tis it is the season. So on Saturday, every Saturday after Thanksgiving until the new year, from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., we offer $8 flat rate parking in our Center City garages. That is the Independence Auto Mall, Old City Garage, the Parkade on 8th, Auto Park at Jefferson, at the Fashion District, and also the Family Courthouse Garage. So if you're coming downtown to do some holiday shopping or just coming to just take in the sights, if you come down on Saturday after 11 a.m. and you leave before 12 p.m., you get an $8 flat rate parking to park in one of our Center City garages. You don't want uh, parking to put it in, in your wallet as you're shopping for that uh, gift of the year. We want you to be able to buy your gifts and pay for parking and not break the wallet. But what will we be, what will we be parking authority if we didn't talk about the days that we don't write tickets for meters or residential parking? We still, we, I'm sorry, I don't want to say we don't write tickets because we still enforce and we're still out on the street. However, we're not enforcing for meters or residential time limits on these holidays. So we just wanted to make mention of these days of the year that there are no meter or residential enforcement. We're still out on the street, like I said, enforcing safety to keep up with the traffic flow. But you do not have to worry about paying your meter or moving your car in your neighborhood on these days. So coming soon would be Christmas and New Year's Day. But the rest of the days are Martin Luther King Day, Easter Sunday, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, Independence Day, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, which just passed, and Christmas Day, which is approaching. Now, one last rate that we do want to go over before we uh, essentially wrap up the presentation. Hey, you know what? It's getting colder. Well, today wasn't that cold. Today was kind of a kind of a surprise. But with the colder weather coming and winter uh, 
season approaching. From time to time, there are city declared snow emergencies. Now, when the city declares a snow emergency, what the Philadelphia Parking Authority does is it provides a $5 flat rate for 24 hours at the garages listed on the screen there. And the reason why we do that is because we want to, uh, if, the, if the road conditions are dangerous and we don't want you driving, we Want you, you want that vehicle off the street, namely on snow emergency routes. So if, when a city declares a snow emergency, that means any vehicle parked on a designated snow emergency route would be subject to towing. So that's in part why we do that, to provide a location for those vehicles in order to facilitate snow cleanup efforts. So whenever the city declares a snow emergency, be sure to check our website, check our social media channels. We're always sure to put that information out there to ensure people are getting it in time before the snow emergencies get into effect and avoid having your vehicle ticketed and possibly towed. Just wanted to keep you that, keep that in mind as the winter season approaches. Folks, we're beginning to wrap up now, and I just wanted to say that should you have any questions about our uh, garage parking options or parking lot options, feel free to reach out to our off-street department through the contact information provided on the screen right there. They are quick, they are responsive, <clears throat> excuse me, and they are grateful for everyone's patronage. But, you know, what if people want to talk to us a little bit more? If you have any questions related to Parking Authority, or if you just want to chat with Bill and myself some more, you can reach out to us on social media, either Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or you can send us an email at engagepPPA at philipark.org. We are here Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. So we are here messaging you or responding to requests or inquiries about the parking authority. So it could be anything. If you want to reach out to us, maybe say you have an enforcement request or you have, you know, a lost ticket and you just want to talk to me, Bill or myself, or you have a parking authority question, you can reach out to us where the face is behind the accounts. And before we wrap up, I do see we have one more question from Ms. Fisher. Ms. Fisher, we'd be more than happy to provide that information to you in email form and we'll be sure to provide it to you when uh, we confirm the answer to your previous question. We'll give you an entire synopsis of all of our, uh, all of the PPA operated garages and uh, parking lots. More and, than happy to provide that. And also all of this information from tonight's presentation will be uploaded to our YouTube channel and also you can find it on our community page. Um, you can just go to our website www.thepark.org if you go to the about page, I mean the about section and scroll down to the community um, meeting yeah, page. Just, I can just show real quick. Okay. So that way, you know, once we upload this video, you'll be able to access all of the information from not only the PowerPoint, but the entire um, presentation this evening. So if you go to, like Janelle said, the about section of our website there, scroll, scroll down. down to community meeting, and you will see all of our previous town halls up, there's a familiar face. <laughs> and you could actually even request PPA staff attend perhaps maybe a community event of yours if you'd like. So that's where you'll find all the information, all the recordings of our past town halls right there. Right at the bottom um, right of your screen on the community page. And normally we try to upload the videos if not tomorrow morning, but sometime at least before Monday. Well, folks, we really appreciate you joining us here tonight for our 14th monthly virtual town hall meeting. And we'd also like to take this time to formally invite you to our next virtual town hall meeting, which will occur next year, January 6th, 2022, at 6 p.m. We do hope you have time in your busy schedule to join us at that point. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, if you wouldn't mind sticking around after, after this uh, after this presentation, it would take 30 seconds to fill out the survey. We would really, really appreciate it. And we, we really want to know what you want to know. But until next time, folks, wish you uh, happy holidays to you and your families. 
and we will see you in the new year. year. <laughs> Have a good, good evening, everyone. everyone.